The thrilling story begins many years ago in a place called Romania, which was ruled by a very brave king named Dracula. Despite being the most powerful, he was very adept at protecting his people. Recently, Dracula learned that their enemy empire was bringing an army to attack them. So Dracula set out alone to fight them all. Dracula also had a very beautiful wife named Elizabeth, who was worried about how he would fight so many people and whether he would return alive. Therefore, Dracula appointed his wife as the new ruler of the kingdom. For Elizabeth's protection, Dracula assigned his four bravest soldiers to guard her at all costs. Dracula, along with a few of his companions, went to fight the numerous soldiers of the enemy empire. It was a one-sided battle where thousands of soldiers faced Dracula, but he fought very bravely. Dracula was able to knock out many soldiers at once, and in this way he continuously fought and won the war. However, Elizabeth was in great danger because the four brave soldiers Dracula had assigned to protect her now wanted to kill her. They even killed Elizabeth with the help of weapons. When Dracula returned to his kingdom, he saw his wife's dead body and went completely mad. He killed all four soldiers at once. But there was another soldier named Ruth, whom Dracula did not harm because he knew Ruth had no idea about the treachery that was done by those soldiers. Although taking the lives of those soldiers could not bring Elizabeth back, it gave Dracula some peace of mind. Dracula had done all these things in front of God, so God cursed Dracula. According to the curse, Dracula could no longer go outside during the day. He was only allowed to go out at night. If his body was exposed to even a bit of sunlight, he would completely burn and perish. Due to this curse, Dracula had been trapped in his kingdom for years. Many years passed, and now we see many soldiers traveling through a forest. Their leader was taking a dangerous weapon called the Lightbringer to a man named Leo, as they needed to figure out how to use this dangerous weapon. Only Leo knew the secret. In fact, it was the only weapon in the world that could kill Dracula. That's why all the soldiers were advancing very cautiously. Suddenly, the leader felt the presence of someone else around them and realized they were in danger. So, he called upon two sisters, Asmin and Elena, and handed the weapon to them, telling them they had to get it to Leo at any cost. Asmin and Elena quickly took the weapon and left. Meanwhile, Wrath arrived with his entire army. He was wearing a very strange mask on his face. Wrath was the same man whom Dracula had spared many years ago, and since then, Wrath had been working for Dracula. Wrath, who looked very dangerous, immediately killed all the leader's friends with his soldiers. Despite searching extensively, they couldn't find the weapon's box. Wrath, somewhat frustrated by this, captured all the remaining people and took them to Dracula's kingdom. On the other hand, Asmin and Elena were riding their horses through the middle of the forest. They didn't know which way to go. Suddenly, their horses went out of control, threw them off, and ran away. Asmin was badly injured, so Elena was taking care of her. At that moment, they were attacked by bandits who looted travelers. These bandits surrounded Asmin and Elena, demanding the weapon, not realizing its true purpose. Nevertheless, they stole the weapon from Asmin and Elena. Among the bandits, a man named Nick took a liking to Elena and suggested to his comrades that they should take Asmin and Elena with them, as wandering the forest at night could be dangerous. Meanwhile, in Dracula's kingdom, Wrath was presenting the kidnapped people to Dracula. When Dracula saw them, he instructed his associate Renfield to take good care of them. Dracula then left with a dangerous look in his eyes. Renfield took the kidnapped people to another room filled with beautiful women and delicious food, telling them these were all theirs before leaving. None of the kidnapped people had eaten well in days, so they started enjoying the food, unaware that the women present were not humans but vampires who preyed on normal humans by drinking their blood. This put the lives of the kidnapped people in great danger. Back in the forest, Nick and his comrades decided to spend the night there with Asmin and Elena. Nick was curious about the weapon in the box. When he opened it and took out the weapon, he started laughing hysterically because it was just a piece of wood. He questioned Asmin and Elena about what kind of weapon it was. Elena explained that it wasn't a normal weapon but was used to destroy demonic spirits and evil powers, and using it was not an easy task. Nick and his comrades laughed even more at this, but at that moment, Leo arrived. 
He was the one to whom Asmin and Elena were supposed to deliver the weapon, as only Leo knew how to use it properly. The worst part was that Wrath had arrived with all his soldiers, quickly surrounding everyone. Leo explained to Rick and the others that Wrath also wanted the weapon and worked for Dracula. If the weapon reached Dracula, no one would be able to defeat him. Thus, Leo took the weapon in hand and began fighting Wrath's soldiers. However, Leo was now quite old and lacked the strength to fight effectively. Suddenly, the weapon fell from Leo's hand, and Nick picked it up, using it to fight off everyone. But then Wrath, who was twice Nick's size, confronted him and attacked. Nick tried to defend himself with the weapon, but he didn't know how to use it properly. Wrath easily disarmed Nick and threw him away. Nick was severely injured, bleeding heavily. When Nick picked up the weapon again, now stained with his blood, it activated, sharp spikes emerging from it. The weapon was blood activated. Nick then used the weapon to continuously kill Wrath's soldiers. Even Wrath couldn't withstand Nick and had to retreat. Everyone who had thought the weapon was just a piece of wood now saw it as a deadly and dangerous weapon. Despite Wrath's best efforts, he couldn't defeat Nick and fled, taking Elena with him to his castle. The others tried to stop him but couldn't. Elena was soon presented before Dracula. When Dracula saw her, he was struck by her resemblance to his deceased wife, Elizabeth. He believed she might be Elizabeth reincarnated. Dracula then instructed Renfield to lock her in his wife's chamber, showing his intentions were not pure. Meanwhile, Nick, Leo, and Asmund were very worried about Elena, knowing Dracula might kill her. They set out for Dracula's castle to rescue her. As it was now fully daytime, Dracula retreated to his coffin to avoid the sunlight. Before entering the coffin, he told Renfield to take good care of Elena and ensure she wasn't harmed. Renfield promised to protect her. Leo, Nick, and Asmin were halfway to Dracula's castle when Leo explained that they needed to learn how to unlock the weapon properly, as it was the only weapon that could defeat Dracula. Nick tried to activate the weapon again but failed despite numerous attempts. Leo then explained that the weapon was a sacred one from the Janine family, and only someone of Janine blood could wield it. Leo remembered that during the fight with Wrath, Nick's blood had activated the weapon. He quickly cut Nick's hand slightly and applied his blood to the weapon, which then activated. Nick began to learn how to wield the weapon properly, realizing he was part of the Janine lineage. Leo guided Nick in using the weapon, and Nick quickly became proficient with it. Meanwhile, inside the castle, Elena was searching for a way out and exploring the castle. Suddenly, Elena found herself in a chamber filled with women who seemed to be enjoying themselves. These women grabbed Elena and gave her a strange sedative, rendering her unconscious. Later, it was revealed that these women were vampires about to attack Elena in their true form. Just then, Dracula appeared, pushing the vampires away. He was furious at his associate Renfield for failing to protect Elena, as she could have died if he had been a bit later. Dracula wanted to protect Elena because he saw his deceased wife, Elizabeth, in her. Meanwhile, Leo, Nick, and Asmund continued their journey and reached a village. They were eating at a small place when a man named Thomas approached them. Thomas was a demon hunter searching for Leo, knowing he had a weapon that could kill Dracula. Thomas wanted to join forces with Leo to kill Dracula because Dracula had brutally killed Thomas's wife years ago. This was why Dracula had everyone under his control. Dracula was then shown feeding his blood to a woman, but her body suddenly underwent changes and she burned to death. Dracula realized that the woman harbored bad intentions and wanted to kill him, which caused her to burn after drinking his blood. Elena, who saw all this, was terrified and ran away, with Dracula following her to his chamber. Dracula explained to Elena that he did everything for the good of people because drinking his blood cured all diseases and made people healthier and longer lived. For some reason, Elena began to believe Dracula's words. Dracula then gave Elena a locket that belonged to his wife, Elizabeth. Elena started to believe she was the reincarnation of Elizabeth and chose to stay with Dracula. Leo, Nick, and Asmund were then shown searching for Dracula's castle on a map but couldn't find the way. 
Leo explained that Dracula had deliberately hidden the location of his castle and that they could only see it with the help of the special weapon. Before they could proceed, Wrath arrived with his soldiers and started attacking the villagers. Nick, Leo, and Asmund had to come out to stop Wrath. Nick, who had now learned to handle the weapon well, activated it and attacked Wrath. Severely injured, Wrath fell to the ground, but the moment Wrath was hurt, Dracula could feel everything happening. In the chamber, Dracula sensed Wrath's pain and realized that Nick and his companions were getting closer. He knew he had to act quickly to protect both Elena and his castle from the impending threat. Because Dracula had transferred half of his power into Wraith's body many years ago, Wraith's condition directly affected Dracula. Wraith's companions carried him out of the village and brought him to Dracula. Seeing Wraith's dire state, Dracula extracted some of his blood and applied it to Wraith's body, causing him to recover completely. Dracula then took Alina to the very top of his castle, where he began treating her like a princess. Alina, too, was increasingly drawn to Dracula, and it seemed like Elizabeth's memories were gradually growing within her. Meanwhile, now fully recovered, Wraith set out again to find and kill Leo and his companions. Leo, Thomas, and Nick couldn't believe how Wraith had healed so quickly. Thomas then explained that Dracula might have used his own blood to heal Wraith, making him even more powerful than before. Renfield informed Dracula that some people possessed a weapon capable of killing him and that they were heading towards the castle as a team. Hearing this, Alina realized that these people were none other than Nick and Leo. Alina was overjoyed at the mention of Nick's name, which made Dracula suspicious that Alina might have feelings for Nick. This revelation angered Dracula greatly. Leo, Nick, Thomas, and Esmond continued traveling until they reached a mountainous area, but they couldn't see Dracula's castle anywhere. Then Leo pointed the weapon Nick was holding towards the sun. As sunlight hit the weapon, a wave emerged from it, revealing Dracula's invisible castle. Everyone was overjoyed that they had finally found Dracula's castle. Nick and his companions quickly moved inside to rescue Alina. Leo used his crossbow to kill all the soldiers in their way, while Nick and the others took another route inside. Soon, Leo found himself face to face with Wraith, and an intense battle ensued. At first, Leo gave Wraith a tough fight, but since Dracula had provided Wraith with his blood, Wraith's powers had doubled. Wraith continuously overpowered Leo and eventually captured him. Wraith summoned Dracula to kill Leo. Along with Leo, all his companions were also captured. Nick, meanwhile, found Alina through another route. Alina was extremely happy to see him, and Nick assured her that he would definitely get her out of there. Now, facing Dracula, Leo threatened him, saying that if he turned Alina into a vampire, he would destroy him. Dracula replied that he hadn't done it yet, but he would soon convert Alina into a vampire. At Dracula's signal, all the vampires present leapt onto Leo and began biting him relentlessly. The vampires began drinking Leo's blood. Meanwhile, Thomas and Esmond were searching for Alina inside the castle. Along the way, Thomas saw his wife, who had been turned into a vampire by Dracula many years ago. Thomas, unaware that she was now a vampire, felt drawn to her. Despite Esmond's repeated warnings, Thomas could not resist approaching his wife. Suddenly, she transformed into a vampire and moved to bite him. Esmond quickly used a blade to kill Thomas's wife, causing her to scream loudly. The scream alerted all the vampires in the castle, who then started attacking them. Thomas and Esmond tried to escape, but soon they encountered Nick and Alina. Nick activated his weapon and began killing all the vampires coming their way. None of them could stand against Nick because he had a magical weapon and had learned to use it effectively after extensive training. As they fought, Wraith appeared, and Nick had to face him alone. A fierce battle between the vampires and the humans ensued. Although Nick attacked with his magical weapon, Wraith was now able to dodge his attacks skillfully, which frustrated Nick greatly. On the other hand, Leo, who was severely injured by the vampire's attack, used his crossbow to break the roof, allowing sunlight to pour in. The sunlight caused all the vampires present to burn. Dracula quickly hid in his coffin to save himself. Nick led everyone to a small chamber, 
but Wraith soon arrived to attack them. Realizing that his magical weapon couldn't kill Wraith, Nick grabbed a large axe from Thomas and hurled it at Wraith. The axe was so powerful that it penetrated Wraith's body completely, killing him. They tied a rope around Wraith's body and threw it outside the castle. Using the same rope, Nick and the others descended and moved far away from Dracula's castle, knowing that Dracula would surely come after them once night fell. As night fell, Dracula emerged from his coffin. When Dracula saw Wraith's dead body, he became very angry. He gathered all his powers and moved forward to kill Nick and his other friends. Meanwhile, Thomas, Elena, and all the villagers were gathering and planning to end Dracula once and for all. But then Elena arrived and said that everyone was completely wrong. Dracula wasn't a bad person. He only hunted normal humans to heal them and feed on their blood to sustain himself. However, no one believed Elena, and they all went ahead to kill Dracula. Now Dracula used all his dark powers to eliminate everyone. Nick also relentlessly attacked with his magical weapon, facing Dracula. But Dracula had also made a plan. He had instructed Renfield to steal the weapon from Nick and destroy it. Renfield did just that. He immediately came from behind, cut Nick, and took the weapon from his hand. It still had Nick's blood on it, which activated the weapon. Then came the shocking revelation. Renfield, who was loyal to Dracula, used the same weapon to kill him. Dracula had become so weak that he couldn't even move. That's when Renfield revealed to Dracula that he was the one who had killed Dracula's wife, Elizabeth, many years ago, and now he would become the new king of the entire kingdom after killing him. Dracula understood everything by now, but as soon as Renfield used the weapon, Esmond attacked him with her many sharp blades. As a result, Renfield was injured and immediately killed. Now Thomas, holding his big weapon, proceeded to kill Dracula. Then Nick stopped him because Nick also realized that Dracula wasn't a bad man. He was just healing sick people to keep them alive. Now Dracula was quite weak, so he told Elena that just take me to my coffin and I will be fine. Elena somehow brought Dracula to his palace and said that if you want, you can heal yourself quickly. But Dracula said that now I don't want to be fine. I just want to spend my last moments with you. Dracula slowly and painfully walked into his coffin after that Elena started to wait for Dracula's turn to be right. But it will probably never happen. Nick's remaining friends went on their journey with the same magical weapon. And he will end evil with the help of that same weapon. Many years later, we were shown Dracula's coffin, which was kept open. And inside there was no Dracula's dead body. This means Dracula is alive and has gone somewhere else. But Elena had said that she would wait for Dracula's ending. And with this, our story ends here.